Thank you and um, welcome Tom Davies from Breakspear Pub Company. Thank you so much for joining me for this session of Hospitality Talks. Uh, appreciate, appreciate your time. Um, for those people out there who might not know who you are and who Breakspear are, could you just do a brief introduction for us? Yeah, hi Katie. Um, so I am the CEO of Breakspear. We've got um, about 120 tented pubs in, um, in the sort of southeast of England and we've got 15 managed houses. So we cover, cover, cover both sides of the business. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so tell us, what's the current situation within Breakspear? Obviously, we're all aware of the fact that all the pubs are closed and we're all working from home. Um, you know, how, how quickly did you realise that the situation was going to be as bad as it was and what immediate measures did you put into place for Breakspear for the pubs? Um, well, well it, it hit us pretty quickly, didn't it? So um, we sort of saw it coming and sort of slowly, slowly, and then suddenly it was like a sledgehammer. Um, I think... And it was interesting when 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 it first started to gain momentum. I think that you know, spoke to all of our tenants, looking at the managed houses, sort of talking to talking to the guys. Everyone was fairly sort of gung ho about it. So well, we're going to carry on as usual. We're going to go to the pub. We're going to enjoy it. And then it didn't take long for that sort of Dunkirk spirit to suddenly flip and everyone go. Actually, it's really irresponsible to, to, to go to the pub. It's really irresponsible to open pubs. Um, and that happened in, in, in five or six days, actually. So suddenly we saw turnover drop um, dramatically. Um, and I think that um, in, certainly in the managed houses where we saw um, a lot of the grey pounds stop coming out overnight, um, eating out at lunchtime and that sort of thing. And that's where suddenly it, it, it began to hit home pretty quickly that it was getting quite serious. And, and we made immediate um, changes to our opening hours and we opened at four o'clock. And we suggested that tenants did the same. Um, in, in many cases, clearly, some of the businesses that were more wet-led um, were, were a little bit more robust. Um, but, but yeah, that, that was a sort of, it suddenly sort of hit us at that point. And then it was only probably three or four days later that the government announced that, that, that it was, um, it, it was going to close um, all pubs and restaurants, uh, which, which I think, in all honesty, was probably a relief. I think trying to, um, trying to operate the business while being told our customers shouldn't come and visit us to 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 and actually but we had to try and keep them open was was, was a bit of a nightmare scenario so at least we we're on a level playing field we knew where we were and to be fair to the government they, they've been great um they have given um a lot of support and were pretty quick to do so um but i think that you know the issues obviously with that are, are, are that it's slightly uneven and sort of slightly um it's not entirely fair the way the way the the, the grants and things have, have worked out but but to be fair, they, 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 they have done a good job. So, so yeah, we, 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 we furloughed the team, I think, as, as most people have done. A, a word that most of us weren't used to beforehand, but now is, is, is used, is used, well, there's quite a few used most words. days. Lockdown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, lockdown, furlough, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, so we furloughed the team. Everyone's obviously um, working from home. I mean, we, as a business, immediately had to look at, look at cash. I think it's, where, it's what everyone did. You know, it suddenly became all about cash flow. And um, you know, we recognised that, that that you know our businesses weren't weren't taking any money. Um, obviously, we have a rent roll that it normally comes in from our tenancies that that stopped overnight. Um, obviously, no no sale of beer. Um, and so yeah, we had to look at all our cash outgoings and suddenly work out where we were. Um, talk to the banks. I think we've all probably been doing quite a lot. So uh, yeah, we spoke to we spoke to the bank um, very quickly and. Um, and yeah, just try to establish a position of, of exactly where we were with, with, with closed pubs and, and try and work on various scenarios for the length of time that we're closed and, and, and then try to factor in some of the support that the government were, were going to give us. So, so yeah, it was, it was a pretty quick, it was a pretty quick, uh, pretty quick ordeal. Um, we all went home and, and that's where we've stayed, I think. So, uh, so yeah, we're now using Zoom and, uh, and, and Microsoft Teams, which are tools I wasn't too familiar with before. So, uh, so yeah, it's been it's been um, it's been it's been uh, it's been a quick thing, but um, but I think we've reacted reasonably fast and and hopefully just you know, stripped as much cost out of the business as possible um, mm -hmm. and, and just trying to keep the ongoing costs as low as possible. That anyone who's working is is either well they're either furloughed and obviously not working, or those who are working have taken significant salary reductions. Mm -hmm. um, our board are all on the furloughed maximum amount, so uh, so we're all sort of in it together. And uh, yeah, we'll just see how long how long it lasts. And, and what about the pubs themselves? So how, how have they adapted? What, and, you know, what, what, what are they doing? I mean, are, are they all closed or are some of them doing takeaway? You know, what, what kind of things are you seeing come out of your publicans? 
Well, look, I think we, we took the decision that, that our managed houses, it wasn't appropriate to try and keep them open uh, in any shape or form. So we have um, you know, some, some of our guys who were living there before, we've allowed them to stay there. We've got some various accommodation um, blocks and that sort of thing, and they're, and they're staying there. So the pubs, our managed houses are, are, are shut. Um, the tenants, they've all taken a slightly different approach. I think some are doing, are doing takeaways. Um, doing deliveries. Um, others, I know a few of them are doing shops um, and they've set them up in, in, their, in, their, in their pubs and actually doing quite well, which is, which is great. Um, I think with a, the nightmare of, of going to some supermarkets and that's when they're, they're, they're stocking up on great meat, um, great beer uh, and other, other essentials. So, um, so yeah, some of them are doing that and really it's a sort of case by case basis, but it's, it depends on, on the style of businesses that they are. I know some are operating a market on a Saturday. Uh, and getting people to come into their car parks, keep you outside, uh, and that sort of thing. So, so yeah, there's a great entrepreneurial spirit out there, and and, and others have just taken the opportunity while the pubs are shut to to, to give them a, a refurb. They've got their paintbrushes out, and uh, and they're and they're giving them a paint, sanding down bars, sanding down tables, deep cleaning kitchens, all those jobs that that you never never exactly. get around to doing. <laughs> yes, exactly. What we should all be doing at home, exactly, but find other things to do instead. But, uh, but yeah, no, so, so, so I know that's been going on. So yeah, I think you know, in, in most cases, people are trying to use the time as proactively as possible. And, and that might be, you know, spending, spending quality time with their families, which again, you know, a lot of our tenants work incredibly hard and it's nice for them to take, take a bit of time out and, and spend it with their, with their kids and their wives. So, so yeah, I think people are finding different things to do, but, uh, but there's a good, a good spirit out there in the main. Yeah. Good, good. And, and so an uh, interesting question is, do you think that the, some of the initiatives that we're seeing now come from pubs and bars, like having a, a shop within the pub, like having a market. Do you think that they'll continue when, 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 when we reopen? Do you think that it will fundamentally change the hospitality industry and, and how we behave and what we do? That's an interesting question. I, uh, I honestly don't know the answer to that, Katie. I think, I think some, of these, the, some of these things that, 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 that the guys are doing are born out of necessity, I think, probably, rather than, rather than a, 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 any other sort of desire to, 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 provide, um, to provide these services. You know, don't forget, you know, if you're running a pub, you know, you're working seriously hard, seriously long hours. And, and you know, by, by doing additional things such as takeaways, such as you know, a, a market or a shop, you know, the, these things, you know, A, need staff uh, and B, need a lot of time and effort to go into them to make them worthwhile. So, so I, don't, I, I don't know the answer. I suppose it depends on the success of them. Yeah. And whether, you know, when, when life returns to normal, whatever that might look like, whether there's still going to be a demand, uh, a demand for it. I think we'll probably find that certain things will stick and other things will, other things will just disappear and, and the traditional takeaway markets will, will, will continue. Um, and the experience that you get by going into a pub um, will, will, will revert to that. So, yeah, I don't know the answer, but I suspect many of them will be short term. And then we hope that you know, some of these some of these gems that have come out might stay for a little bit longer. But um, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Yeah, yeah, it's a difficult question to ask. And what does the future look like then for Breakspear overall? Well, look, we've been around a long time so far. So, um, so we've got. A, Couple hundred years under our belt, so hopefully there's going to be um, we'll be around for a little bit longer. Um, but I, I think I think you know, I see um, I see a, a long, slow recovery. Mm. I think that you know we, we we've been given, as I say, some some great support from the government. It's going to be a finite amount, and I think that when we are allowed to reopen, um, I hope there aren't going to be too many restrictions in place. So, yeah, a big concern of the industry is that you know, the government say, right, you can reopen, but you're only allowed sort of one man and his dog in each pub at any one time. And, and I think that that is a, that's a huge challenge because alongside that, you know, there will be a reduction in the support given um, and, and, and then we'll, we'll, be in, we'll be in trouble. But assuming we can reopen and assuming that there aren't too many restrictions in terms of social distancing, um, then, um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be, a, I think, I think in, the, in some of the wet-led businesses, I think you'll find a quicker recovery. People will be dying to get into the pub dying to have a proper pint of beer uh, and I think that will be relatively quick aren't we all but um but I think in terms of in terms of the eating experiences um and certainly rooms and accommodation that yeah you know, that, 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 that require you know, businessmen staying away that require international tourists coming over from China America uh, and other places I think if that is going to take time you know, we're not quite sure what the international travel market is going to look like 
um, and certainly some of our pubs in poorest areas are going to struggle. Um, so I think, I think it, it is going to be a slow recovery for, for many. Um, and I think that's where we just need to be, to be wary. And, and, and certainly on both sides of the business, looking at our, our managed houses, making sure that we're staffing accordingly and we're keeping, it, keeping an eye on cost. I think also when you're looking at, looking at our tenanted business, we've got to make sure that we are um, supporting them in, in the right ways and making sure that their, their rents are appropriate for the levels of business that they are doing. And if they are in a tourist area or they do heavily rely on accommodation or perhaps they, they have a, a, a big grey pound coming in at lunchtime, which is not going to be there for the foreseeable future. You know, we just need to make sure that, 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 that we are, um, we're being supportive and understanding of those challenges that are undoubtedly going to come when um when we're allowed to reopen so so yeah i think it's going to be a um i think it's going to be a slow a slow start um but 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 look you know, we've, we've bounced back before um i think we'll bounce back, bounce back again um but yeah i just don't know when exactly um we will be reopening as i say michael gove at the, at the weekend is talking saying that we will be one of the last allowed to reopen I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. I'm sure it was a surprise when he said it, but I think actually I'm not sure anyone's hugely surprised by the comment. So um, I just hope that when we do reopen, there, are, there, there aren't too many restrictions. We're allowed to trade as, as much as we possibly can. Um, I fingers crossed it'll happen while there's still some sunshine. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but looking at the bank, the bank holiday weekend at Easter with the beautiful weather that we had, it was it was rather rather depressing. Um, yeah. Looking outside, I think of those beautiful gardens that could be uh, that could be busy. But, um, yeah, so look, I, yeah, as I say, I think it's going it's to be slow, but we will get there. And as an industry, we just need to be understanding of each other um, and, and, and looking at both sides of the, you know, the tenants and the managed businesses. Making sure we're, we're looking at them individually and trying to support both of them in the best, best way that we can. Brilliant. Lovely. Tom Davis and Breakspear, thank you so much. And I look forward to having that point in a pub with you at the end of all of this. Can't wait. All right. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Tom.